here to connect you with your passion and what you love. This is your report for the astrology. Highlights occurring at the Taurus full moon through the uh, con uh, through uh, the aspects that are happening until uh, November 16th. So um, I'll also be looking at the uh, full moon chart and there's just I've got everything's unscripted at this point I've just written down the main aspects that are happening during this time and we'll just see how things roll uh, this is a time of empowerment and uh, as we go into the report you'll understand more about why that is and it's a time when you can get to the bottom of the things uh, that have been holding you back get to the truth of things Saturn going through Scorpio is like you know Scorpio rules is the sign that rules surgeons psychic surgery Saturn is really uh, intensifies that whole thing of getting to the truth getting rid of anything that is not the priority for you to be realizing what you're here to do it wants you to get down to work and uh, just discard anything that is not going to put you right where you need to be connecting with the people you need to be connecting with this is a time when you may have noticed that uh, Saturn in the area of your life where it's going through tends to um, you can feel isolated in this area that you're going it alone uh, with all the energy that's coming from Neptune and Chiron uh, it's the natural placement for it would be 12th house so this is very much your unconscious that is really being spiritualized you're really getting in touch with your dreams uh, you know your natural inclinations what you were born with any of the karmic patterns the 12th house is also karmic patterns it can be mental attitudes uh, patterns from your past inherited ancestral patterns that have to be released uh, each of us has plays a different role in our uh, car in our lineage some of us um, I don't know what percentage it would be but um, I would say it's about 10 to 25 percent of us are really the designated healers in our family and we may find that it's called upon us to be the peacemaker you know we may have grown up with that role in our family that we were always the one uh, that was the peacemaker one of the ways that can come out in a negative way is that we absorb all the negative emotion from our family we are like scapegoated in the family so that we wind up you know having real low self-worth feelings about ourselves so we may find that we always struggle to feel secure in life uh, to get our needs met our emotional needs met but we were serving even though it was in a reverse way we were serving as this sort of a dark kind of a healer in our family where we absorbed that negative energy and if we were strong enough we were able to transmute it but a lot of times you know what happens is that we may get into addictive behaviors or different defense mechanisms we may get into drugs or alcohol because it's so painful you know and a lot of us who are healers we're very psychic we're very sensitive and we can take things very personally when we're coming from that egoic level things can feel very personal to us but as we build up our uh, our uh, our own feeling of being spiritual beings I mean that's the whole challenge is to build up your identity as a spiritual being rather than being identified with your ego because as the the ego you know it, it wants to I mean it's like a it's like a untamed child it wants what it wants when it wants it and it you know it's a limited very limited the the ego your ego is a very limited identification that uh, and you develop these belief structures that you think will keep you safe and in my opinion beliefs until when you get aware of your own spiritual self as a spiritual being when you become identified primary uh, more than 50% of that 
I'd say. You know, the more, the better. But as you increase your identification as a spiritual being and you learn how to surround yourself with people who see you, see the beauty in you, see the truth in you, see your lightness, see your love, um, they focus primarily on that. They can see what you're about. No matter that you may have, you know, all of us have, when we're in the still identified with ego before we totally transcended ego not very many of us have done that I haven't met very many people who have transcended their ego um, you know you, when you're identified with the ego primarily then you and you have that limited sense of identity and all those defenses you're taking things so personal uh, then you really it, it's it's hard not to become subject to that negative mind chatter and believe into the the whole, I'm not good enough there's all that going on and then somebody comes along and mirrors that to you uh, then that just gives you proof you know oh here's somebody mirroring to me that these feelings I have about myself and those feelings as, from the egoic level are always you're never gonna feel good enough because you're just limited uh, operating from a little, very limited part of yourself so you're never gonna feel your fullness when you're coming from the ego so that's what we're doing right now we're going through these empowerments when um, Mars at this let me look at my uh, uh, full moon chart here um, when we are going through uh, this full moon it is um, there is a pretty complicated full moon primarily it is a very beneficial moon there's some wonderful beneficial aspects that are going on that will help you through but there's a lot coming up that you need to that needs to be surgically removed so to speak so it can feel very intense the Scorpio the Saturn very intense energies that are intent upon your changing to realize your divine potential and they it's an impersonal energy and it's it's not going to be placating your ego and making sure that you're comfortable through the process because it's really it's like the rubber is meeting the road and it's it's time the time is now uh, hopefully by now you've developed more sense of courage you have gotten rid of those people who are mirroring you know the you know letting go of those people who uh, are mirroring that you're not good enough and that you are associating with uh, your spirit guides and spirit teachers I mean those are some of your highest higher frequency energies that are hanging out with the angels hanging out with your the ascended masters your own spiritual guides uh, they will remind you continually um, that you know you're a spiritual being I mean when you associate it really raises your frequency there are all these other tools uh, science of mind tools that you can use to elevate your frequency there are things you can do as far as reprogramming your subconscious mind there are different uh, meditation can really put you in touch with your and help you strengthen your sense and feeling of yourself as a spiritual being I've covered all of these things at other times um, but you know we have this this full moon uh, is a moon of illumination it's really it's opposing the Sun the Venus Saturn so it's really illuminating anything that is getting in the way of your preventing you from realizing your divine essence your life purpose where your heart is what your heart is really about where your love energies are what it is you want to personally commit to because Saturn is about commitment and Saturn is also about it's not res just responsibility but it's your empowerment so that other people mirror and respond to you how you really in your divine essence truly feel about yourself as a spiritual being and what you're here to do so that's why you have to cut away the things that are not mirroring yourself these deeper feelings the true feelings of yourself as your natural authentic self so um, you know you get the response you get the mirroring that 
shows you how loved you are that shows you that you are a perfect spiritual being and yes you're always going to be evolving you're always going to be getting better I think the main thing is that you need to finally decide know that you are committed to always showing up and being your best self that if you make a mistake we all make mistakes it's one of our best ways to learn um, you are committed to correcting it you're committed to uh, committed to apologize and say I made a mistake you know that does not reflect who I am truly that's just an old program that's not who I am and I'm you know I'm owning up to it and what can I do to make it right so and then you feel good about yourself you know because you've done right by yourself and by other people in your life because it's all connected so whatever you're putting out is what's coming back so that's some of the the work that has to be done at this time to get right now this uh, the it, it's good that the Sun Venus Saturn is sextile to Pluto and Mars which are about to conjunct in Capricorn because uh, that really helps you feel that empowerment and they are coming together to empower you they're really wanting you to because Capricorn is all about being in your authority it wants you to get to the bottom of things and really claim your authority at this point to take that empowerment to stand in your power now uh, the, the it is square it's coming up to exactly square I'll go over these degrees with you the dates for this but it is coming up to square the south node which is past karma past patterns um, it is in the uh, naturally and the natural Aries is rules the first house so this is could be it's how you presented yourself it's your persona it's your mask so these are patterns that how you've uh, presented yourself in the past that worked with for you that are not working for you anymore and you want to get free of them Uranus is the, the freedom aspect they're coming up to do an exact conjunction where there's a final release of those old patterns uh, about how you presented yourself could even have look you know how you how you dress you know it's your persona it's your mask the way you dress it could be your weight it's your physical body the first house represents your first physical body and your physicality and how people actually physically see you in the world so and then we have uh, Neptune uh, which as I said earlier is in the 12th house of the unconscious where it's your ancestral inherited karma that is need needing to be cleared at this time and so there can be some stuff that goes on in the family that you need to protect yourself if you're getting any sort of feedback uh, that you know where you're getting you know negative stuff from your family you need to you need to take space from that don't do that energy right now it's more important that you feel good about yourself bless those people in your life love those people any of your ancestors um, but you don't have to absorb energy that is not really putting you in your best feeling energy for yourself at this time I think it's very important that you feel good about yourself uh, that's what this full moon is all about it wants you to feel comfortable the Taurus is all about your love energy what you love what you're naturally your natural inclinations are it does rule your uh, second house which is your personal finances your second house is your house of self-worth this can be also uh, people who are very close to you uh, that you've had very close to you you may be releasing some of those people who have very been very close they may have been long-term close people or just people are somehow uh, connected with your personal finances and your personal feelings you get a lot of your feeling of self-worth from these people and the mirroring just is toxic now perhaps but you know it's so it's illuminating the things that you need to release getting your empowerment so that you feel good about yourself so that you can through releasing uh, you can have better personal finances better feelings of self-worth and uh, I, it could also be where you if you've been doing this work and you've been already releasing those people you could actually get some rewards right now because you've been doing that work I mean that would be a good indicator that you're on the right path uh, so 
don't take it personal if there are things for you to release that you've associated security with in the path that just are not working for you now. They are not putting you in these feel-good feelings for yourself. You need to let it go. And let's see, what else is going on? Um, let me go over, look at some of the dates for what's happening now. Okay, so on November 6th to 23 p.m. Pacific, we have that 14 degree Taurus full moon. Uh, it is, and the natural house for that is that second house. And the Taurus full moon, as I said, is opposite to sun, the sun in Scorpio, which is conjunct to Venus, also in Scorpio. And they are both moving to conjunct Saturn. So you're really serious about who, you know, getting down to work and you're really committed to getting the kind of responses you want you know you uh, the first step is taking responsibility no longer being a victim where you're taking responsibility for what's showing up how you're showing up and what's showing up in your life and the next step is doing the inner work doing the cutting away that's necessary really identifying the things in you that need to shift that you need to release and let go of so that you are in integrity with your divine essence, what your purpose is here, and the things that you're doing are aligned with that. And then also your personal love energies, that you're taking good care of your own personal love energies. You are being very choosy about who you're hanging out with, the thoughts, feelings, emotions you're hanging out with. Uh, and so that you can get this empowerment, and so you can get the kind of response that you know you are worth and that feels right for you um, and you just you don't want to do the the old you know you don't want to take things personally anymore if someone is showing up putting negative vibes out towards you certainly check in to see if there's any uh, you know personal truth to it uh, if there's anything of value there for you but sometimes people are just putting out negative energy they are like a uh, a, uh, a petty tyrant <laughs> who's helping you become aware of what you're really doing inside yourself. They're showing up to show you what you're already doing inside of yourself. That's why you're attracting to them, attracting those people into your life. They help you to learn to stand up for yourself, to stand in your power. So use them in that way and bless them that they showed up and showed you how you're not standing in your own power. And you don't let other people abuse you or just, you know, project negative energy onto you that, you know, it's most people when they are putting out bad vibes, it's about them. It's really very little of it is really, you know, it's something that they're projecting because they are uncomfortable to feel that within themselves. So, uh, okay. So this uh, Taurus full moon is also trying to Mars conjunct Pluto, which we have that sextile between the Sun, Venus, Saturn to the Pluto Mars, and then we have a trine. So there's all this support during this illumination for grounding to getting this empowerment and grounding this energy in a constructive, positive way. You're being really supported at this time. You need to support yourself. I think that's what the issue is, that, that you're showing up for yourself. And then also there's a sextile to Neptune at four degrees Pisces from this full moon, Taurus full moon. Another really auspicious, there's a lot of love here available, a lot of spiritual love coming to you from the ancestors. You know, this may not be your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, family uh, that you have contact with, if you have contact with them, but it's just the ancestral energy is very supportive for you. So you can call upon that for strength, to get strength. Also, this Neptune at this time is conjunct the fixed star, well, star from Holt, which is a royal star. And the Archangel Gabriel, watcher of the south, uh, protects this area of the heavens. Gabriel, of course, is about uh, you know, protects children and protects your trust and innocence. So there's a lot of protection for, for you know, getting in touch with these ver very vulnerable feelings and emotions. Um, uh, the 12th house is a very uh, sensitive area. Pisces is very sensitive. 
So there's a lot of healing. There's been a lot of healing. This year has been a lot of healing. We've been in a real healing cycle, um, especially since we entered the uh, Uranus square Pluto. Then on November 8th, Mercury leaves its retrograde shadow as it enters Scorpio. So there we have this, we've Mercury now the mind, this energy of the mind, but the, there's more clarity. It's come out of its shadow. So um, there is more clarity, although it is uh, getting ready to uh, try Neptune on November 11th. Mercury will exactly try Neptune, which is really good for meditation. Uh, it's a real dreamy place. It can really heal the mind. Very good for healing the mind. Um, feeling feelings of self-love for yourself. Um, you can feel really dreamy. I, it can be a little bit challenging right around that time to really make a concrete decision. Uh, if you've already kind of scoped it out and you've done your homework, you've researched things and and you know it's the right, it could be the perfect time to move forward. The per perfect, perfect ideal situation could show up. But if it's an impulsive thing, be careful of that. If it's not something you've been thinking about and already reviewing and doing your research on and all, uh, you know, you may want to wait a little bit after the exact on November 11th before you make take action slow so um, Neptune is slowing down at this time too so that's why I say it's a really good time for healing the mind the lower mind uh, you know Mercury represents the conscious mind the more the where mind the mind you're aware of not the unconscious mind so it's those patterns that you have that you are aware of that you've been reviewing and now you're coming online you've 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 reviewed things and you realize certain ways you've been seeing things and attitudes and all you are ready to have let those go and you're ready to move forward into a whole new attitudes and ways of viewing things that is more workable and will bring you more the results that you desire and you'll really want to get down and implement this you know Scorpio really wants to get right to it and uh, to the truth of it and get right to it it just really cuts the chase and gets right down to it so um, on November 10th we do have that exact uh, conjunction between Mars and Pluto um, and then as I said, Mars is moving to exactly square Uranus, conjunct the south node at 13 degrees Aries, and that will happen on November 12th, the same day that Venus conjuncts Saturn at 25 degrees Scorpio. So there's a real seriousness uh, to this day to just cut what isn't working, trust your heart, really be committed to yourself. There could be perfect people perfect people who show up in your life right now who are you're aligned with and who can commit to you and commit to the kind of relationship you need for yourself at this time so you know be open but really be in integrity with yourself if something doesn't feel right for you trust yourself this is the time to tr you can trust yourself when these planets are going through Scorpio it's a time when you can you, it's a time for you to trust yourself and you are going to be deepening and committing to yourself and trusting yourself as being a spiritual being and letting go of stuff that is not working for you. So let's see. On November 11th also Mercury does exactly try Neptune as I said which is and Neptune will um, and its retrograde phase that's been in since June 9th. Now, when it was retrograde, uh, it is in this 12th house, so it was, it could have been digging up a lot of having you look at a lot of old feelings, a lot of old emotions, a lot of old ancestral patterns, a lot of unconscious patterns that you have to let go of, you have to heal from, you have to let the past be in the past. And now it's time to move forward and realize these dreams you have that you were born with, that you're here to realize for yourself, to realize more of your divine 
spiritual potential. So if you've been in any fog or funk or very tearful, you'll, you'll now feel like, huh, you can move forward now. Things begin to, to clear. When it first moves um, direct, I know everybody's going to be different how this affects you. Depends upon where, where it's at, if it's if it's conjunct or square or doing anything with any of your personal planets, how you affect this. But this is a time when there could be, you know, it's really, you're really, you know, it's a time when you're really feeling it's time to get on with it. It's time for implementation. So, uh, and then on November 16th, uh, Venus enters Sagittarius for the next few weeks. So things really begin to lighten up. You can really feel a shift in the energies. Yeah, you'll be much more in a, you know, Venus is the planet of, Venus and Sagittarius is, you just want to have fun. You want to lighten up and enjoy life. And you're really going to shift to a whole other different sta station in your emotions at this point. So you'll begin to, and then the other planets, you know, uh, will begin, the sun will move out of there in another week's time. You know, the energies, uh, Saturn. I'll be back soon with another astrology forecast. Uh, and I'll be looking at the Sagittarius new moon cycle that starts on December, uh, new moon cycle uh, that happens on uh, the 22nd of the month. I think that's when the it's the I think it's the twenty second. We have the Sagittarius new moon, and that is really a pre uh, precedes and gives you a feeling. I think when Venus moves into Sag, you kind of get this light feeling that's going to be coming up more than we have the Sagittarius new moon, uh, as the the Sun also moves moves into Sagittarius at the same time. So, and then you'll really get a feeling more of this lightning that's coming in when uh, Sagittarius, when uh, Saturn moves, in, moves into Sagittarius on December 23rd. You know, we're really beginning to, you know, move. There's a whole shift happening in your mind, in your emotions, in your soul essence. Uh, and just your yourself as a mature being, being able to be responsible for yourself, get the kind of response you want from your life, whether it's how you, what kind of finances you want showing up, what kind of people want you want showing up, what kind of situations you want showing up, what kind of work you want showing up. All the areas of your life, you know, are, you know, if you've been doing this work, uh, you know, right now you're going to finish that up. You should kind of feel like, because when Saturn leaves a sign, you start getting rewards coming in. You'll start getting signs of, you know, you did good. You know that you're you're getting some feedback that you've you've done a good job. You've done your work, and you'll start seeing some rewards come in for yourself. So anyway, I hope this report has been helpful to you. I wish you tremendous success now and always. And uh, please leave your comments, questions below the video. I always love hearing from you. And until next time, relax, enjoy your life, and stay connected. And when I say stay connected, I mean stay connected, stay committed, stay connected to yourself, because that's where the root self of yourself, your natural self, to you, that's the whole task that we're all about, is getting to the root and really committing and being connected to our natural self. And then have the world will mirror that root connection and you'll feel nourished. You'll feel, feel a deep sense of security. Your security won't be based upon how things look outside or that sort of thing. But And you all have this sense of empowerment that you can get the desired results in your life. You won't feel like you know, because all of this work has been done where you've shifted uh, things deep inside yourself. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, take care. Have a good day. Thanks for joining me.